Hello, this is Hoofert from Excel DNA. Today I'm talking about the real-time data feature of Excel. What is RTD and how can you use it as part of your add-in? Let's have a look. Uh, once again, this is a tutorial that um, you can find the information on GitHub under the Excel DNA Tutorials repository. Uh, so the fun bit we're looking at today are features, uh, functions like the ones I've got here that update Excel from an external data source or from the add-in. Uh, so these values are changing, not because a macro is running, but because these cells are using a function that is linked to a real-time data source. Uh, the first one here is just ticking in the time um, and the other ones here are uh, providing us information for this kind of wave-like uh, chart I'm drawing. Uh, it's a bit simpler than it looks. Uh, I'm just trying to make something that shows that the data comes in in a dynamic way and can be integrated in Excel's calculations and charting and so on. Okay, so um, the RTD feature of Excel is not very well known um, because if you go into a, a workbook and you type equals RTD, okay, that's the built-in function, the RTD function, but then what do you do? You need this prog ID and server and other information um, and with Excel as it comes out of the box, there's nothing you can type in there that's going to work. Excel doesn't ship with an RTD server, so you need to install some external add-in or make your own add-in uh, to provide this real-time data feed into Excel. Um, so well-known add-ins um, from uh, the financial data providers uh, give you one source of RTD information, um, but RTD is also a really important feature of the Excel calculation engine that lets us build other features like asynchronous functions, uh, functions that go out to a website and fetch lots of data and then uh, refresh and update the workbook when they come back. Um, another uh, reason why RTD servers, these data sources that the real-time data feature uses, um, why RTD servers are not uh, easy to make is you can't do that in VBA. So you can't use VBA to make an RTD server. Uh, you need some other environment like a .NET with Excel DNA or something similar. And then even if you want to make an RTD server, in the past it has often been quite tricky um, because RTD is based on Windows's uh, COM technologies, the component object model uh, features of Windows, and those can be tricky to use uh, um, for a programmer. Um, and so that, uh, yeah, so RTD maybe has not been used as much as it could have been. Um, Excel DNA makes it easier to make RTD servers, and so I hope this feature will become more popular. Okay. Um, I, I am going to close my spreadsheet and just focus a little bit on um, close my spreadsheet, not save it, and just focus on this um, and now focus on the GitHub tutorial. Um, so what is RTD? It is this real-time data feature that I've um, explained. And so um, the heart of an, uh, the RTD feature is something called an RTD server. Um, an RTD server is the code library that is part of an add-in or a separate library that provides this real-time data feed to Excel. And in order to um, cooperate with Excel, uh, this RTD server 
needs to implement this uh, standard interfaces that Excel understands and that um, is used to uh, provide the interaction between Excel and the real-time data source. Um, so the RTD server interface is a COM interface. Um, it is something that, that Excel DNA will help make a lot easier, but it is useful to look at how this uh, COM interface actually interacts with Excel and what is going on at the heart of the RTD mechanism. Uh, so the, the iRTD server interface has a fairly small set of members um, that describe the interaction between Excel and the RTD server. Um, there are server start and server terminate me uh, methods uh, and these are used when the RTD server is initially created and initialized by Excel um, and then uh, and at the end when the connection is completed or when the uh, RTD server is no longer needed then server terminate is called um, and then uh, there are this connect data and disconnect data uh, calls that Excel makes to the RTD server to connect uh, a particular data topic. Now the data topics in RTD are the um, individual data items that can be streamed into Excel. For example, if the RTD server is used to provide a uh, real-time stock data feed, the uh, topics might be uh, a share code and what specific piece of information you want. So it could be like MSFT for Microsoft share price and then maybe open or live or something like that to indicate what particular price you actually want uh, to feed into um, Excel. And then there are some, uh, then there is a refresh data, which I will uh, talk about uh, in a bit when I show the particular interaction. And finally, there is a heartbeat method that Excel uses just to check that the uh, RTD server is still running. Okay, so I want to uh, just go through the sequence of events that happens um, when uh, Excel is talking to an RTD server. So initially we start off with a, a worksheet where uh, we enter a formula that equals RTD formula and the RTD formula takes as its first parameter the name of the RTD server, the, the prog ID which is the, the com name of the RTD server. Um, the second parameter can be used if the RTD server is running on a different machine but that's not something I recommend and so it's normally left out. And then from the third parameter and on there can be uh, quite a few more. Uh, these are strings that are sent to the RTD server to identify a particular topic. Okay, so we put this formula into uh, an Excel uh, cell and uh, now Excel will start the RTD server with this server start call and it will call connect data with these topic strings that we had. Let me make this a bit bigger. Okay. Um, the RTD server can then decide how to implement this data connection. Uh, for example, it might make a, a, a call to a back-end service and uh, subscribe to some information about the particular uh, share code or something like that and uh, will then return whatever the current value is back to Excel and Excel will put that into the cell. So now with this uh, subscription in place the data source can now update our RTD server. Um, it could be polled or it could be streaming in some other mechanism data into the RTD server. So in this case, the 220 is an updated price for the Microsoft share. And every time the RTD server receives an update, it tells Excel with this update notify call that there is new data available. Excel does not necessarily immediately receive the new values. Um, 
it is just telling Excel that this RTD server has some new data available. And this can happen a number of times with the data streaming in, the RTD server telling Excel that it's ready, uh, that there is new data. And then at some point Excel will make a refresh data call uh, to the RTD server, which will fetch all the new data that the RTD server has. Excel will then uh, return these individual values to back to the cell and the cell will get an updated value. Um, later on, if that formula is cleared, Excel will do the housekeeping work to tell the RTD server that uh, that data topic is no longer required and it can in turn unsubscribe to the backend service. Uh, and if there are no more topics at all, then Excel will call uh, the server terminate method on the RTD server to tell it um, uh, to do its cleanup before uh, releasing it. Okay, so um, in this uh, workflow, the RTD mechanism is uh, started by a, a cell formula that made this RTD call. Um, and eventually there was this update notify and uh, refresh data sequence to get the, the new data. Um, so that's uh, the basics of what's going on inside uh, an RTD server. Um, now I want to talk a little bit about this helper class called Excel RTD Server, which is the base class in the Excel DNA library that can be used to easily make RTD servers. Um, so the services that are provided by this base class and that make it easier to make RTD servers is that um, the RTD server can be used without needing a separate administrator level registration on the machine. Uh, Excel DNA takes care of that uh, on the fly. And then there are subtleties around how an RTD server is allowed to call back to Excel with those update notify calls. And so Excel DNA is protecting and managing those calls so that uh, nothing goes wrong there. Um, in particular, uh, the threading and the throttling of those calls is, is managed by the Excel RTD server. Um, and then it also, Excel DNA also lets you make a user-defined function that wraps this feature so that the user doesn't have to type the equals RTD um, formula into the sheet, but can use a user a friendly formula that uh, encapsulates the RTD server name and um, can even change some of the parameters if it needs to. So as an example, um, I've built a basic RTD server uh, that's in part of this tutorial uh, on GitHub. It is, the project is called a Timer RTD um, and it provides uh, two data sources uh, that are fed back to Excel. The one is this uh, data source called Now and it just provides the current time. And the other one is a wave data source. It provides uh, a, a, a series of data values that just increase and decrease like a wave up and down. Basically, the values of a sine wave. Um, okay, so I, I want to show that this uh, add-in is structured with the three uh, separate components. The first is this data sources uh, file, which contains the two data source classes. And this file and the, the stuff inside this file has no reference to Excel or Excel DNA at all. Uh, this file represents some abstraction or some interface to the backend data source. Um, so it is, it is uh, only raising uh, this event and I, I, I can make this data available in different ways, but the easiest for me was to just make an event um, that will publish uh, every time there's a new value. And then internally the data source is implemented with a timer that fires every uh, 100 milliseconds and updates uh, the uh, 
updates the, uh, well, publishes a new data value through this event. Um, so we've got these data sources and the simple one is the now one and the um, slightly more complicated one is the wave data source. It takes uh, two parameters, an amplitude and a frequency. Um, and it also remembers when it is initially created. And so uh, every time it uh, wants to generate a new value, it, it looks at how long uh, has elapsed. And it uses then the frequency and the amplitude to adjust the return value. Um, finally, both of these data source classes also implement iDisposable and uh, that is just to show that uh, you can do a cleanup if that particular uh, topic is no longer needed. Or if that data link or data source is no longer needed. Okay, so that is the data source part of our add-in. Uh, then it also has an RTD server part and a functions part. So let's look at the RTD server part next. Um, the RTD server uh, is the part of this project that uh, derives from the Excel RTD server base class. That is defined in the Excel DNA library. Um, and it implements uh, some of those methods, the server start, and the most important of these is the connect data. Uh, the connect data is called Excel when new data is needed and, and it is passed in uh, a topic which is an object that will be used to update the return values and then the topic info which is the set of strings um, that are used to configure a particular topic for this RTD server. Um, and so what is happening in this connect data method is uh, we are finding the, the first piece of information out of that topic info and depending on whether that uh, first string is now or whether it is wave we decide to make the now data source or the wave data source and then further for the wave data source we go and try and read uh, some other values out of that list of topic strings um, and what this RTD server is doing then is it is, for example, in this now data source, it is subscribing to the new data value event. And every time that the new data value uh, is raised, um, the RTD server is calling update value on this topic. Uh, and that update value call is the one that eventually uh, will tell Excel there is a new value available and what that value is. Uh, a similar uh, story happens with the wave data source. Um, this is pretty much the, 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 this code that uh, links up the topic and uh, how it is handled uh, is, is the most uh, important part of the RTD server. The rest I've added just as an example, there is notification of the disconnect and then even if the uh, final terminate on the server is called, the server terminate uh, method will run. Um, but you can see that the RTD server here is not uh, particularly complicated. Okay. Um, the final part of our add-in are the wrapper functions. Um, I've made two functions. One is called timer now, the other is called timer wave. And both of them internally just make this call, Excel call.rtd, which is a call inside the Excel DNA library. And it is passing in the uh, namespace and name of the RTD server here. Uh, that second parameter, I'm uh, passing in null for the server name. And then here is the set of those topic strings which can be used by the RTD server to figure out exactly what to provide. Okay, so in one case it's now, in the other case it's wave with an amplitude and a frequency. That is the whole add-in. Um, and let us now see how it works. If I press start, I think Excel will start up. Uh, it will load our, our add-in. Um, 
and let us see I can make a new workbook and so if I say equals timer now okay there is the time uh, it is ticking along uh, and what has happened now is it has created it has called this function which calls um, this RTD helper in Excel DNA that in turn has called into the RTD server it's connect data and I've made a data source and I'm listening to their data sources updates and the data source itself now data source has made a timer and every time the timer elapses it uh, fires the event with the current time and so that's how the time is ticking into uh, Excel um, the other function I've got here it takes an amplitude and a frequency so if I take uh, the amplitude as 5 and I make a 0.1 uh, frequency it will move up to 5 and then I'm expecting it to go down to minus 5 again and then slowly start coming up again um, if I want to make it uh, slower I can reduce the frequency I can make it 0 0.01 uh, and I can um, reduce the number of decimals so it doesn't look as hectic but you can see what is happening here is these, this, this, these functions are feeding data into the sheet and I can continue um, typing into the sheet and uh, making calculations that depend on oops depend on those and uh, the, sh the sheet continues to be available and interactive uh, while this data is coming in. I should mention one thing um, and that is uh, there is one setting in Excel that really affects how this RTD feature works which is how fast Excel is willing to uh, uh, process these updates. Uh, so I'm going to uh, press Alt F11 to go into the VBA uh, interface um, and I want to show you in the immediate window if I type uh, application.rtd.throttleInterval that, uh, that number uh, is a number that uh, is a, a setting for Excel that says how quickly the RTD servers update. And so the default value for this number, uh, and I can reset it to the default value, is 2000, 2 seconds. Um, and you will see that if I've now set it to 2000, and so if I go back to Excel, uh, the updates here will be much slower. Um, the actual uh, internal updates are uh, streaming into the RTD server as quickly as they did before. Uh, but Excel is uh, not reading those values more than uh, more frequently than every two seconds. Um, and so there is a balance here between uh, how quickly the data must come into Excel and how overwhelmed Excel will be if there is too much data coming in too quickly and having to update uh, large spreadsheets. So you need to take some thought as to what you want that value to be. Uh, I would recommend 500 is probably a, a, a good number for the throttle interval. It uh, normally will allow Excel enough time to calculate but still update frequently enough. Uh, and so in our setting it now looks like it is updating nicely. Okay, uh, finally let me uh, just show you the sheet that I started off with with that wave-like uh, feature. Uh, what really is going on here is these are just different frequencies and if I go into the chart and I uh, format the chart uh, then uh, I can switch on the line and switch uh, switch off the line and switch on the marker um, let me see how I do this marker options built in and now you can see each of these uh, points are just moving up and down at a different rate and it is because I'm using this wave function with different frequencies uh, that are driving this chart. Um, so that is kind of fun but 
I, uh, in reality, this would be some data that is streaming in from a, an external data source and updating a larger model. Okay, uh, I will go back to the uh, tutorial writer. So I've got here some information on um, uh, the bits I spoke about. And also I have some uh, additional references that uh, might be useful, some extra Excel DNA examples, and uh, also um, a Microsoft reference, uh, in particular this uh, frequently asked questions uh, uh, page from 2001, that is from 20 years ago, uh, is uh, still a great reference about RTD. Um, what the design goals and uh, details are of, of the RTD mechanism and so on. So I would say that is a, a, a good next uh, mechanism, a, a next uh, bit of reading uh, if you want to understand more about RTD uh, and how it was introduced uh, into Excel 20 years ago. Okay, so I've uh, tried to explain a bit uh, about RTD, uh, why it is a nice feature of Excel, uh, and how you can make an RTD server with Excel DNA as part of an Excel DNA uh, add-in. Uh, that's it for now. Thank you.